Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to another Last Epoch dev stream. I am your host, Mike, and it's glad great to be here. <laughs> Try to say I'm glad to be here, and it's great to be here, and it came out all as one. How's everybody doing? Now, I know there's definitely nothing else happening in the ARPG world today, so uh, it's going to be a humongous stream, tons of people. <laughs> That's all right. I, uh, I'm going to take this opportunity to just play some Epoch, you know? Um, we are, we're starting off on, oh, we got a sub while I was, while I was doing that. Dehario, six months! My goodness, we made it half a year, this is amazing! Glad to have you with us. That's pretty cool, we've been going for half a year. Now you may notice that my, uh, build's a little different right now. And uh, you may be able to tell that I'm on a Void Knight. Uh, so we are... We're, we're trying out a Void Cleave build instead of a uh, our Javadin build. We've got a new one, new one lined up here. So our... Um, we're, we're... We're proccing Abyssal Echoes here. Um, and we're primarily using Anomaly for buffing, Multi-Strike for buffing, and then Void Cleave for those big ol' hits. And it's been since early working on last patch before I actually tr like played any Void Cleave really. Um, Cause I've been playing Druid this patch, working on it. Uh, so you know, maybe a little little rusty on the on the gameplay to start with, but that's okay. We're, we're pretty beefy. I think I think Rhymer. Right. Once again, this is a build built by Rhymer. Uh, thank you very much for that. And uh, it's probably a little OP to start for where we are in the in the monolith. So we'll we'll be give, give me a little time to get up to speed on it. And I'm not 100 percent sure how the uh, is set up either. What's each color? <laughs> I want to stick with my two-handed sword. I'm I'm loving the two-handed sword. My goodness. Those things have the hit points. I cruise through here. Alright, what do we got? If this is your first time here, please leave questions in chat. At me in chat, and I will, uh, Answer some questions for y'all. Yeah. It's funny, every time I'm playing in a new build, I'm like, I, 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 all I can do is think of new ideas on how we could add cool things to it to change functionality. So right now I'm like, could we could we do something more like the anomaly enemies that you? Because I'm, I'm using anomaly and like it's it's sending it's, it's sending them forward or sending them um, forward in time and you know, you can reactivate it. But what about a node that would like reactivate them relative position to where you are when you reactivate it? So like it brings them with you, so you don't have to go back to fight them. That'd be cool. What's the new Druid shapeshift form? A lot of fun is what it is. Super cool. Uh, do you know if there will ever be an option to turn off the 3D animation on screen when you time travel? We are, um, we're, we're, we're working on the whole, that whole experience because it's not what we want right now. 
Um, I'm not 100% sure what the solution is going to be yet, um, but we are changing it. So, the, maybe. <laughs> I, I did, um, I guess I can take a look at my build here really quick, but I did um, hide a bunch of stuff for the loot filter. Cleared out my stash, you know. Did what any self-respecting person would do. Pretend I'm self-respecting. <laughs> no. These guys have a lot of health. Single target might be a little weak. Might be a little little on the weak side. I'm gonna have to work to bump that up early here. Yeah, we're using two hands. We do not care about shields. We're just gonna hide shields. Uh, I love the time lock aspect, yeah. Super cool, so ice form confirmed. <laughs> I mean, I love a good pun. Just just throwing that out there, so, you know, maybe. It's got it's got some uh, it's got some cold elements to it. I think there's I think there's a cold node in there. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to remember if I'm thinking of uh, which which one I'm thinking of because there is uh, a lot that's been added to all of them. I cannot do that. Stand up. <sighs> Gotta be careful with double dash. <laughs> uh, what what are the high level design goals for legendary items? Great question. Um, high level design goals for legend legendary items would be. Uh, something to strive for, some something where you know there's these um, these high-level, really powerful items that you can uh, that you can deterministically get. Um, like g given some sort of okay, deterministic is a, kind of possibly a, a misleading thing there, but where you you have some agency over um, how you, the legendaries you're getting, so you can target certain legendaries. Um, that, that's really important. So. Have, having that, uh, having them be less reliant on just uh, here's one individual drop that is. I had my other headset off, something like that. This this earphone, nothing comes through this side at all, so I usually just sit with it off, so I can hear things in the rest of the house better. Uh, then I, when I stream, I try and put it on because it doesn't look as weird. <laughs> but this is just a dummy headphone on the right. <laughs> Anyways. Um, yeah, something so you're you're less reliant on a single individual drop to get this really amazing item. So they're they are, legendary items are what you're striving for. They're what you're pushing for. They are really 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 good. However, um, in order to make something that that powerful and that good, we kind of need to have. Um, you know, it, it either ends up being like there's one drop, like okay, you got you got that one in a, one in a billion drop and. Oh my God! You're suddenly zero to sixty rich type thing, and um, while that is like, really great to have those drops, we've we've made legendary items a bit of a important part of the um, the the leveling process and the love and not leveling process the uh, the gameplay itemization. There's the word I'm looking for. We've made uh, we've we've made them a pretty important part of itemization in general. Um, I cannot do that. So it's it's really important to to be able to have a little bit of control over which ones you're getting, and to be able to work towards them in pieces. So having uh, I'm speaking really abstractly about this, but having so a really good example of this is uh, the Pandemonium event in Diablo 2, which I've been playing recently and uh, it's childhood all over again. 
Anyways, um, the in the Pandemonium event, you can find keys that are rare drops from uh, specific mini-bosses, and you can combine those keys together to access some very difficult bosses that then drop organs, which you can combine together to, to fight the hardest content in the game. And it's these, like, stepping stone moments. These, um, once you've got a piece of, like, the pieces drop, once you've found those randomly, you can then start to combine them together to make the thing that's really good. And you have a little bit of control over that. Um, and this is going to help with, this is going to add a little bit of that to the game. So there's, a, there's um, like, you're completing specific events to combine these things together in such a way that you are creating a better item. And, um, yeah, that's, that's, I guess, high level, high level goals for it. I really don't think I told you much of anything about uh, how it's going to work or what it's going to be exactly, unfortunately. So sorry about that, but. Sword. I, want, I want to stick with the sword. I don't know why. I'm just gonna stick with the sword. Probably gonna find some amazing axe and just be like, poo hoo, sword it is. <laughs> that, or, that or a big mace. I can see big mace being fun. I'm gonna hide. Don't I have wands all hidden? I'm gonna make sure wands are all hidden here. All right, next question from Karnaga. It's cool name. Not die here for a second. Oh yeah, almost, almost uh, just did what I said I wasn't gonna do. There's an interesting discussion over on the forums, I've probably been spying on it, um, <laughs> about the skill level speed in early game and how some new players feel punished early on if they want to test stuff. Is this something you thought about as well, or is it something that's totally not on your mind? We, we, we've thought about this a lot. We've actually increased the rate quite a bit. There's there's an interesting thing that happens at the, the higher end too, where um, we actually get feedback pretty regularly that it levels too quick. Um, so we, we, we get feedback quite a bit of both directions. And so it's, when, th this is not the first time this has happened where we've, we've had, uh, like, conflicting feedback. Um, and it's difficult to know what to do with it. Um, but we, we are, it's definitely still on our mind. And the, the rate, the relative rates for character level, um, and, uh, like, passives gained through quests and where those quests are and skill points gained and, and uh, experience gained through quests and where those are and like all these things get brought up pretty frequently and and will continue to be modified as as we go through so i don't i don't want um if, if you are if you do have very strong feelings about it one way or the other i would um i, I would say we don't have conc I don't have something to be like, oh yes, it's way too this, and we're gonna do this, yeah. But it, it's something that will continue to change and will continue to evolve, and and that's also all affected by um, different things we have available in the campaign. So um, and and end game too, end game and campaign um, opportunities, uh, acti activities, objectives, things to do. <laughs> uh, so like we have as as we get more end game content, we can rework a lot of the scaling of things. As we get more um, alternate campaign content, we can rework the scaling of, of things in the campaign. And like, so there's, there's a lot of opportunities we have to change things still, uh, g given how other things come into the game. Um, what, one thing I would say to people who are new players um, and are concerned about that, uh, that issue is, it might be kind of scary, and you might, it might be a little unclear as to if you should be um, like leveling one thing permanently, or if you should be switching those points out um, and trying new skills. Switch them out, try new skills. It is going to... It, there's a lot of things happening behind the scenes that probably should be a little bit more obvious, um, that really uh, help 
early game experimentation with with skills and um, and and like like catch up mechanics and like speed speed leveling of lower level skill things like that. It's all there, and uh, it really does mean that like there, there was there was I did I did experiment with it recently on a on a level uh, playthrough that I did, and um, I had one skill that I never respect from right at the start. Like I I took my level one skill. I think it was. Uh, I don't know who it was, but I took I took a level one skill and never respect it, and then I just kept changing out other ones, and like every time I got a new skill, I would always spec to that new skill, whatever it was, and like the new skill quite frequently was very close. Like it was behind by a point or two most of the time, but like not much. And if you leave it for any reasonable amount of time, it catches right I up. Not do that. So I, I think it's mostly a communication problem, as I've been just talking through it <laughs> as we're going. All right, any plans to add mana efficiency or cost reduction to primalist skills? Um, I mean, there's not a ton there. It's um, we like to have thematic separation and mechanical separation between the classes, and um, modifying the cost of your skills. Can <laughs> you can take rid of this fire? <laughs> That's funny. Um, the mechanical separation and the thematic separation, it's, it's something that we like, like, mana cost is something that we like to spend more time, um, exploring on mage than, uh, than primalist. And that's not to say we don't do it ever, I'm, I'm sure there's some places that we do it. Um, but it could be added. You never know. Oh, I bet the build thing's wrong, isn't it? It's totally wrong. Rhymer, if you have a build, oh, you messaged me about this five minutes ago. <laughs> so good at this, guys. Don't even know. Custom, build, edit, new link, kablam, submit. There we go. Should be good. Oh, stream labs. There's my stream labs. New build should be up. And and we've got I left all the uniques there, but we've got all of our to sorts are available to sort. Yes. Wow. Go for experience. We want that XP. All right, uh, how many affixes legendaries will have maximum? Absolute maximum, 10, 12? I think there's a case, an edge case where it can be 12. I think there's an edge case where it can be 12. But like, it's such a misleading question, which is why I'm happy to answer it. <laughs> You're not gonna get 12 on one of them. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. It's not gonna happen. Uh, hello. What makes the? It's it's like okay. You're not gonna get 12 on one of them. Like you're not ever gonna find a 4T7 item. Like and and it's it's not directly related. But like that's you It's just not gonna happen. <laughs> Uh, hello, what makes the three missing masteries so special that they could not be released with their class? Um, each one of them is a different story. Um, the... Oh, uh, the Rune Master, it was... We were releasing Sorceress and Spellblade very early, and, um, we just didn't have the resources or time to do it fully at the, t at the time, so we, we, we were like, okay, well, let's get... Two of them out well instead of three of them out, oh, which is meh. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, then uh, Rogue's actually similar. We were we we did all of Rogue in one patch cycle, so the entirety of every Rogue skill that's available right now was created in, in a single patch cycle, start to finish. Um, which is nuts. It's still to date the most skills we've ever built in a single uh, patch cycle, and that patch was intense. 
Um, we had tons of people that were, we pulled everyone from everywhere to work on skills. Um, that was a ton of fun. Uh, but we still, like, even, even so, even making, what was it, 12 skills that patch or something on just Rogue? And then we also had stuff on other ones too, I think. Um, we, we just didn't have time to... to, to it, it's, it's about, get, I guess the, the short answer is, it's about getting um, less content feeling really good instead of getting more content just feeling okay. We'd rather, we'd rather wait and do it really, really cool. Um, there's also an element of uh, it's really, it's a big deal to release a new mastery class and um, saving it, it's, it, it's something that we can be like, okay, here's the, and I, I don't know what order we're doing this in or if we'll do them all together or what. I don't know that yet at all, but something we could do possibly is here's the rune master patch or here's the falconer patch or here's the three new masteries patch. Um, and I, and I think that's, uh, makes, makes for really interesting content because, um, having new stuff to do, I don't know why I did that, having new stuff to do is, is really fun, and one of the biggest ways we can add new stuff is by adding new masters, because it adds a bunch of new skills, so all those new combinations. Yeah. Uh, what's the other one that I missed? Uh, and then Warlock. Warlock is actually, uh, it's basically the same as um, Rune Ru Master, really. Uh, it's just, it's gone through so many. <laughs> it's, it's gone through one of the most variations and, and changes that any anything has. Kind of nuts, actually. Yeah. The amount of changes that it's had. All right. Will you ever change or revert how potions work? Ah. Uh, they haven't changed much over the last several years. So we're talking revert. We're talking like three-year reversion here. <laughs> uh, most potions drop that drop are either outside the map or bugged. Uh, it, it, like, that definitely happens every once in a while, but the dramatically vast majority drop inside for sure. Um, if you're see if you're seeing most of them drop outside the map, um, like. That's something very wrong. I would verify game client files or something. I don't know. Like there's, um, or or there's some like specific spot where that happens, and and you're just going to that spot a lot or something. I don't know. But the they they really shouldn't drop outside the map very often at all. Like I haven't seen one drop outside the map in months. But if you're seeing consistent bugs, like, yeah, drop a report and we'll get on it. You'll learn how to aim this thing properly. <laughs> it still goes off, that's hilarious. And then it comes back and he's dead. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but, 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 so checking for every drop to see if it's going to land in the map is, um, it, it's, it's a little bit computationally expensive. And so we, we fudge it a little bit. Um, we do try and position things that could drop potions in places such that they won't drop off the map as often. Um, and there's probably certain, like, locations... Yeah, the abilities still go, that's funny. Um, there's probably some locations where it's way worse than others, so we should, we should probably be looking at those specific locations rather than the whole system, I think. Alright, any plans for a 30-point Shaman skill in the relatively near future? Yeah. We, we've been, we've gone back and forth on what that, the final Shaman skill is going to be a few times now. Uh, it's not coming next patch. Um, I don't know when it's going to come. But, uh, yeah, we, we, <laughs> we, it is an active, frequent topic of discussion for design. Um, oh, I should turn this off. It's... Yeah, the, um, 
No, I, I was gonna just say the things we were planning, but I, I just can't. Sorry. It's it's tricky <laughs> to get exactly what we want. That's, that, that's this lot. I cannot do that. Spriggan teasers. Hi, Quiet. How's it going? Uh, Spriggan teasers. It'll be more to the point than uh, than previously. I feel like I'm doing something wrong with my uh, buff ordering. All right, is movement speed still being looked at? It feels awful having to use ring slots for movement, not feeling like a snail. I think there's there's um, like. So, so movement speed will always be looked at, first off. It's, it's, the, the answer to that question will always be just yes. Ten years from now, the answer to that question will be yes. Um, <laughs> it's always going to be a topic that, we, that we're discussing. Um, I would say... It's, it's tricky. You, you want to have a way to improve your movement speed. Uh, like becoming becoming faster feels really good. So starting off slow and becoming faster, that moment where like you're, you speed up and you speed up and you speed up, that progression feels really good. And so we like having that progression where you're where you're actually like you're noticeably like I'm getting faster and faster and faster. It feels like you're adding more power to your character. It feels like your character is getting better, right? Um, there's sort of a an upper and lower bound on how fast the character can go where it doesn't either feel terrible because you're too slow or is just ridiculous because it's way too fast. Um, and so we need to, we like that, that gives us a window to work in and we kind of have to start you as close to the low end as possible so that you can finish as close to the high end as possible. So you have as big of a transition where you can feel like you're getting faster and faster and faster because we want that feeling because we like that feeling. Um, Some characters don't really need it because they either proc haste all the time or their movement skills are coming from things like, their, their movement is coming a lot from movement skills like teleport, etc. Um, I feel like the, if, if it feels mandatory to put movement speed on ring slots, yeah, that's not good. Um, but, and that might just be reducing the amount of movement speed that they give. Um, but there's sort of this weird thing that happens. It's like moving speed is one of those things where it doesn't really matter how little there is. It's just taken, you know, it's sort of this, like, do you want, do you want 400 defense or do you want 10 offense, 10 offense, obviously. Right. And it's, it's a difficult thing to uh, reconcile on, um, on how valuable it is and how good it's going to be to the point where it feels mandatory. Hope that gave a window into the discussion we do have frequently about it. Lol, okay, so to specify it better, <laughs> how many affixes will you be able to have on legendary item maximum? And by that I mean on a single item, 12. I think it's 12. I'm pretty sure it's 12. It may only be 10. It's either 10 or 12. I, I, yeah. But like, most of the time you won't get there. <laughs> that's that's that that edge case I'm talking about is rarer than a 4T7 item. Or at least similarly rare. I don't actually know the numbers because they're so unbelievably tiny that effectively the same. <laughs> Can you at least tell us tell is it going to be more than 4? Yeah, yeah, you, you'll uh, I'm, I'm pretty confident saying this. Every legendary will have more than four affixes on it. There might be an edge case where it's only four.
I want to. I want to go look. But as soon as I look, I'll just give away how it works. <laughs> And when I say 12, like, as the weird edge case, you won't be able to just be like, I want these 12 affixes exactly. That's, like, in, in that example, like, eight of those are preset. <laughs> All the echo nodes it feels like the ec it's echoing very infrequently maybe i was just playing warpath echo and that one can go crazy high yeah that's right get stunned feels like i have culling on as well Ryan made the build for me it's fantastic it's working great i'm being not as terrible with it now as i was a minute ago <laughs> I do love Anomaly, I'm, I'm getting back to feel for it again. Don't lunge slightly too long, lunge, lunge twice. I need to put like a little like time in between you can reuse it there. Is the Warlock class going to have fire support? Possibly not heavily, I don't think. The fire skills in the Acolyte feel kind of random that you can't get scaled passives. Yeah, there, uh, fire is definitely a secondary element for Acolyte. It's not designed as a primary one. So it's similar to, like, we, we've, we've got secondaries in lots of other ones too. And it's one of those things where you can, like, either have it as, like, a hybrid secondary thing to use or use it to proc certain things or sometimes it'll come into play really nicely with certain items. And they're, they're really designed as like exploration avenues for you to, to try and design something around. Whereas the primary elements are really designed more as a, I'm not sure how to do this. I'm going to do what seems natural for this class. Okay. It works really well. Um, and, and having those distinctions I think is important. So it's, it comes back to, um, in, uh, like in Diablo 2 as an example, the Enchantress. So, uh, Sorcerer, you're not a melee class, you're not a bow class, but you can use Enchant to suddenly um, get a whole bunch of um, attack damage and attack rating and everything. And so you can, you can become this melee class with Enchant, this weird skill that has almost no other synergies, and um, this, like, a couple dumb items like the beast and become a bear with enchant and suddenly you're like okay this is just weird but it works and uh i, I think that type of interaction is really important to have also i missed it i think i was talking thank you very much master sword 1291 also for six months that's amazing that's so cool we got two six months going wow and thank you also resub just a few seconds ago sg048 welcome back for your second month in a row resub twitch prime very happy uh, Master Sword, I realize this because I, I looked at your question. Any, can you tell us anything about the last Paladin skill? No. <laughs> and that's not a, like, am I allowed to? I just physically am incapable. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, look, I need Spriggan info so I can properly have insight to adjust my Spriggan unique. So why not share with the class? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, no. I've been told very, very strictly I'm not allowed to spoil the new transform stuff. Um, yet. Mm, yet. Do you, uh, hi, do you add more affixes, types, and items? Um, y yeah, so we... We add new affixes almost every patch. We add new items. There's there's new unique items that get added every patch. Um, there's this patch will be just like the last I don't know eight patches. We'll be getting new base type items as well. Um, we've got some plan for the patch after that as well. Uh, so I think it's just a blanket. Yes. All right, llama, coming back to movement speed. I think different people have different thresholds for what feels good or bad. Totally agree. If someone just came from playing high-end PoE characters, they'll likely be used to a much higher movement speed than EHG. May wish to give LE characters. Yeah, definitely. That's that's. Yeah, totally true. We, I think, I think the important thing there is we just got to make our own game. Um. Ho ho. We've got another resub, Monkey, Monkey Strack, Monkey Strack. Uh, welcome back, resub two months. Thanks for the awesome game, guys. Thank you for playing our game and having fun with it. Very cool. Um, that was a bad anomaly. <laughs> Get over here. All right, what's this bad boy? Don't care. That's neat. Um, yeah, I, I think all we can do really is just make our own game, make it the way we want it to be, and, um, yeah, people will hopefully have fun and enjoy it. Alright, by the way, you wanted to tell something about the new druid form when you've been rudely interrupted by other questions. So please, come again. What was it you wanted to say? <laughs> uh, they're pretty cool. Uh, they're super fun. Uh, and they're sparkly new. Uh, 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 all right. Yeah, I, I know the, the, the charity goal thing's not updating properly. I'm not sure why. It's much higher than this, actually. <laughs> it's, it's probably, like, triple. Because there was, uh... There's a lot we've had. This is our third stream. I don't know how many there's been. Here. Uh, so. I don't, I don't know where we're at. There. Something like that is probably more close to where we are. <laughs> uh, thank you for your answers. I have one more. No, everybody gets one. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> will there be any restrictions on how many legendaries you'll be able to equip? Uh, uh, as of right now, no. Um, it's possible that could change, but uh, as of right now, no. Um, I will say that it will be uh, extremely difficult to get like the exact legendary you want. Um, so you might find yourself. Um, really really like pushing for a specific legendary but you just can't get it yet um, and so it might it might take you a while to get 
your exact legendary that you want. And you may get legendaries that are like close, but not quite right. Um, and there might be situations where like you, you find a legendary and it's just not as good as your other things you can wear yet. Um, you know, that sort of thing. So there's there's it's gonna be a lot of play there. get a little absorbed in the arena ones. A little on the tricky side sometimes. And then, you know, still, still learn the build. The boy cleave though, you line up a big one. Oh, it feels good. Come over here. Hiya! That's good one. Felt great. I wonder if I've got the mana to support, like, Erasing Striking here, because I'm not using Rebuke. Just toss an Erasing Strike in there. This note I was I looked at, and I think, I think that's what I'm going to go for next, big time. Right, the Void Essences, I forgot about these two. You do a lot of void damage. <laughs> do do. But. Uh, yeah, void essence might be the way to go. Just the void damage and move speed, though. So good. See? Move speed. Like this great thing. Move speed. 1%. Let's go for it. I am I am victim to the, the, the same thing that I was just mentioning. Um, alright. Any plans on trying to implement anything to help provide an alternative to just attack or cast speed? I think Blade Dancer's idea is a great one. We'd like to see more combo builds instead of just cranking up attack speed as much as possible. Yeah, and I think that's that, that, that comes back to, again, the, the us attempting to um, uh, like create mechanical and thematic distinctions between classes. So you bring up specifically that one class has this distinction, um, and and kind of what I hear is, cool, we've made a unique mechanic for that class, and it's it's interesting and fun, and people like it. Um, and that's not to say that we don't have that anywhere else or won't put that anywhere else, but having it focused on something and it, 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 it's something we like. But yeah, like we do have. Um, we are really trying to incorporate... Uh, okay, so Rogue was the first class to really push this inter-skill synergy hard. We definitely had it before Rogue, but it was the first one where almost every single skill has multiple other skill synergies um, to the point where you're not using them all. In a lot of other classes before before Rogue, if there was ever something that proc'd another skill, you were almost always just using it because it was just the best thing. Um, but but now we, we're trying to make it so that you're having to choose. So for example, like the new Werebear form, there's synergies with like 10 skills there or something ridiculous. Um, we actually just cut one, I think. So like nine or whatever. You know, I don't remember what the exact number is, but like to the point where you can't have all of them. And I think that's much more interesting. Alright, are there any plans to implement speed level things to the game so you don't need to go through the entire campaign at the same pace? Like how Grim Dawn does experience potions and a level 1 leveling set. Well, we do have some level I leveling items. Uh, Hammer of Laurent, for example, like the item levels with you or it gets more powerful as your it scales off your level. Um, so yeah, we're, we're definitely interested in doing things like that. And then... Um, uh, speed leveling stuff, just, I, I think the important thing is we want the campaign experience to be relatively um, consistent on your first character each leap or each um, each season or each cycle or whatever we're calling it, I think it's cycle right now. Um, and 
And I, I think having... Oh, I did not mean to do that. Bring him back! <laughs> uh, I, I think having uh, ways to... to to uh, expedite the leveling process on subsequent characters is a valuable thing for sure, um, and and not having it be just unbelievably lopsided. So so having it be you can you can get through the campaign faster, but maybe you don't level that much faster, um, and then because you're just doing harder content, you end up leveling a little bit faster. And I, I think I think that really speaks to experienced players being able to expedite content the content on their follow-up characters is is I think a positive thing. Um, so that that's that's more what we'll be looking for. And yes, we do have plans for that. And yes, you'll see some of that really soon. <laughs> that was a good one, I like that. that. Alright. Uh, is there any new skill that you can share tease for any of the, the last three specs? No, sorry. There's not. Would love to. Would love to. Uh, when to expect next content patch 084? Um, as always, it is the roughly similar cadence to what we've done previously. Um, if you look at all of our other patches, there's, I think, generally a three to four month wait between them. Um, this will be... We have, we have no plans of changing that anytime soon. <laughs> oh, Lama already answered. Yeah, that's a great answer, Lama. I'm not... Please please don't take my answer of, of saying that's a great answer to say early December is correct or anything like that. It's... I, I, I don't know exactly yet. So... Roughly in that time-ish frame. Yeah. Uh, any internal talk... Uh, or plans to bring LE to consoles. Yeah, it'd be great. I miss LE while on the road, stuck playing the competitors on console. That's okay, we've got great competitors, and they have fantastic offerings on console. But, uh, yeah, we'd love to. Um, the, 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 the biggest... Um, there's two major uh, development hurdles that need to be done to make console work. Like, two really big ones. And we can't really do it before that. Um, and, and those are really, really solid controller support to the point where you just don't need a keyboard and mouse at all and you can play the game just fine. We're not there yet. We are actively working on it. So that is something that's coming. Um, and don't expect to see a console release until after our PC um, controller support is rock solid. So there's, there's number one. Um, number two is... Uh, Multiplayer and networking uh, functionality, and and the the, the systems we're we're building like we are building with that in mind, but we are building it with a let's let's make our initial release solid and you know if like like we'll if, if there's problems we'll come to it later. So we're we're really focusing on our PC release first, um, but we are building it with systems in place that can support um, console as well. If that makes any sense at all. We're trying to future proof ourselves, but we're not going to um, cripple ourselves now in exchange for future proofing later. I think it's a good way to put it. Um, is our dancing snake body? And, um... Yeah, those are the two big things. Networking and... 
um, controller support. But yeah, that's that's something we want to do. We also need to have like good relationships with uh, the the major console companies, and um, you know, get dev kits for those things. And uh, like suddenly there's a new build and release pipeline and a new QA pipeline, and like there's there's a lot of stuff that that gets that it needs to get expanded upon when we're gonna do that. Um, we do want to do a console release. That is that's a goal for us on the horizon. Um, I have no idea when that'll happen. Not do that. <laughs> Keeps going without him. I think we have better ways to detect that now, actually. Come to think of it. And a racing strike does not feel like it's doing anything. I wonder if it's proccing something though that's helping. It's probably eating a proc from Void Cleave. Yeah. Alright. This is my first time I got your stream. Welcome. Glad you can make it. Uh, gotta say, this this game is epic. Keep up the good work. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I, I will keep up the good work. Right, show what I got. Sunwreath. Mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm. Uh, mana back on crit from Void Cleave and do Erasing Strike. Oh, that's that's how I should be doing this. I mean, I'm not I'm not running into any mana problems. That's the thing. It's just like I'm just kind of hitting stuff. I haven't looked at my mana in a while. Uh, will LE Endgame System expand version 1.0 release after 1.0 release? Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, will be add more skills than just skills coming from masteries. Yep. Um, I mean, there's so there's like triggered skill triggered abilities. Um, we have those all the time. The 1.0 release goal for skills on all classes looks a lot like this, with one extra one right here. So that's how that's our goal for 1.0 release for skills for all classes. Um, we're missing one right here. That's it. Um, and so every class will be the same, and that's, like, you can clearly see there's a really easy, ro uh, extra one there for more, for masteries, um, these, these can get, uh, reorganized slightly, like, we, we've already got a plan to shift this a little bit to add a, another two right here and another one right here, so there's, that, that expands, or possibly another row as well, so there's, we, we are actively building in space in the UI for these extra skills, and, like we've actually we've actively built in space here, um, and there's not really a lot of space here. We can put one here, um, but yeah, there's there's room for just more skills to just come from leveling, um, and and yes, that is something we we are going to look at post launch. And I'm realizing this question may actually be asking about skills coming from other locations than, like, your class at all. So, like, specializable skills coming from something like an item, we're not going to do. There's too much... Well, unless something changes, we're not... We don't want to plan for it right now. There's 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 already things... So, like, like plus one multi-strike, right? If I take this off, I lose a point for multi-strike. But what if I took this off and I lost a whole skill? Like, that's a problem, right? <laughs> Here, I can see it came into this one, and I just pop right back in, no problem. But if it's, like, a whole class, like, a whole skill that just disappears, like, tracking that and having different specializations for each one of them saved is not really feasible, so you'd have to re-level them every time. So if you, like, suddenly were just like, okay, I'm going to do this to craft on it, oh no, I just lost my whole skill because I had to craft on that item. 
Like, yeah, we just can't associate them there. Thank you very much, Daedalus. That's a big one. I think I see 10 coming through. Where'd it go? Thank you. Yeah, that's definitely 10. Um, very cool. Who got one? Anyone recognize? Oh, kiss, Kissing Eye got one. <laughs> they're, they're, um, they're on our team. They're one of our uh, developers. That's funny. <laughs> Thank you very much. Congrats to everyone who got one of those. Uh, Grohl plushies merch when? Oh my gosh, I know, right? Um, <laughs> I, like, yeah, we, we've got to do things for those for sure. Like, um, I've seen these uh, reversible plushies. Um, and like, they're probably, there's probably certain things, the ways they work and everything like that. But like, having one that's like a regular Grohl and then like you turn it inside out, it's like a void touch Grohl. I think that'd be really cool. I, I, was, I was thinking about this randomly a few days ago. Um, any plans to make the game especially monster killing more gore? Uh, yep, there's, uh, environment gore is being, is, I think, slowly being turned up in a few places. Um, it's, it's tricky, like, the noise in combat can sometimes be really overwhelming, the visual noise in combat, so we, we really try and strike a balance between, like, lots of visceral stuff happening and being able to understand what's happening visually by looking at it. Um, so there's definitely a balancing act there, but yeah, we, we have been getting, and like, we don't have a E for everyone or whatever it is, uh, rating on, on the game. So we, we don't have to be quite as, um, cautious with it. Ooh, you hurt. You hurt. Racing Strike's threshold for culling is really low to start with. <laughs> I'm sorry, those I can. Let's just sit and read some uh, some questions here. We got a couple that look good. Uh, 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 have you seen Poe three one six patch notes? Yes, they introduced the Pearl Rift, which has uh, similar functionality. Yes, uh, it, it, there, there are similarities between uh, Temporal Rift and uh, Volatile Reversal. Um, there's also similarities between both of those and Tracer and Echo and, 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 and. Like, it's definitely not a, a first-time brand-new mechanic that we came up with or anything like that. Um, I think we put our own spin on it, and we're still developing that, 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 that personal take that we have on the, on the skill. And especially the changes that come in with the, uh, with the skill trees. Um, but, yeah. Yeah. If if the implication is is something about like stealing it from us or anything like that, I I would be unbelievably flattered if they did, and I I really don't uh, don't think that's what happened at all. Also, I like on a side note with that, I am really interested to see uh, what they do with with the, with the skill and like how it works with all of their um, support gems and everything. And you know, I'm I, I'm really excited to see what happens with it there. Because there's there's some tricky things that we've been dealing with with that skill for quite a while. Um, <laughs> yeah, we, we've been doing a lot of work on it recently, actually before. Before the, 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 that announcement even happened, we've been like really working on it because there's there's some issues with it. Like there's some really good things about it too, but there's some big issues with it. Yeah. I cannot do that. I 
I gotta look at multi strike uh, and see if it's really the best option here because I feel like I'm using it single target a lot as just basic melee, you know? Um, will Healing Hand ever get a tree? Yeah. Healing Hand is, uh, yes, it will get a tree. I think it's the only one that doesn't have a tree right now here. Oh, that's Sigils. <laughs> what am I clicking on? Healing Hands. Uh, da -da -da. Yeah, all these have trees. Uh, but yeah, we, we don't plan on do on pulling a <laughs> what's what's an example? Uh, what was it called? The healing wind. We don't plan on pulling a healing wind on it. Uh, how will dungeons scale their difficulty? Will they scale uh, by just area level, or will the player also have a choices available to them that scales the difficulty higher, and thus available? Uh, rewards. Additionally, if dungeons interact with other endgame systems, will those also scale their difficulty even further? Wow, lots to unpack there. Um, I, I, I can't really give you exact info because we haven't done our big dungeon uh, detail dev post yet. Um, we're still working on dungeons. The functionality is not... Um, well, the functionality is actually in and it is playable right now, but it's not... Um, I wouldn't say polished yet. So we are, we are still actively developing it, and things could change, so I don't want to say too much about exactly how it'll be. However, um, it is designed as both a um, leveling mechanic and an endgame mechanic, which is only really possible if there is some form of scaling involved. Um, so yeah, expect to see some form of, of scaling happening. I cannot do that. Um, Unless we completely change how we want it to work in the next, <laughs> like, time to actually get in the pack, day? <laughs> yeah. And I caught up. Woohoo! Yay, celebratory catch-up dance. Hauntingly beautiful music. Let's group everyone up. Who wants who wants to party? We like to party. Oh my goodness. This may have been a horrible mistake. Was this a horrible mistake? Find out next time on. No, it was not a horrible mistake. It worked great. <laughs> Did Mike take the wrong path? Yes. Will Mike have to backtrack? Yes. Pretty sure anyways. Yeah, like with 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 the dungeon scaling, and w when we when we do have, um, like scaling difficulty, scaling rewards is also a thing. And that's I guess not always the case because sometimes uh, we do things where difficulty scales and rewards don't, like with masochist mode, or we're just like good luck. <laughs> I really love how Mascus mode is just a, uh, like, oh, you think you can do it? Go for it. Give it a shot. Come on, come on over here. We've got swords. They hurt.
There we go. Hollow Blade. That's probably what I'm looking for as a base. Maskus mode equal real game mode. <laughs> Do you actually play on Maskus Rhymes? Ooh. Like that's gotta be good. Will you guys make more maps that make a proper loop? Nothing more enjoyable than clearing the loop on a main. Uh, on a min-max character, no enemies left without backtracking, or do you feel uh, dead-end backtrack maps are needed? Uh, I think variety is great. Um, I think I think having... I, I can definitely understand the love of the loop, okay? Don't get me wrong, for sure. Um, I, I think having variety is really important, just almost across the board. With, with almost every mechanic, almost every system, almost every option, like, just having different options is great. Yes, yeah, sometimes, yeah. Mask is tough, man. It is. It is no joke. I mean, technically, it originally was a joke, but still, it's, it's tough. Throat's getting the pony. You know, a little horse. <laughs> All right, where should I where should I put these points? Where are we finishing up, Void Cleave? Pew, pew, pew. Skills. The Void Cleave. Sorry guys, I'm just referencing the uh, build guide that I was so wonderfully granted. Yeah, there we go, alright. Multi-strike. Multi-pass. Yes, yes, very good, multi-pass. Uh, give you a chance to see what I'm actually building if you haven't followed that link yet. Bad at spotting the difference. There we go, though. I got there. We got there. I guess I should look at the passives. What passive should I be investing in? Yeah, okay. Move speed and void damage. Kill Surprise. Alright. More questions. Yay! Alright. Does the new crafting system deal with the little problem of having thousands of unused shards? Yup. It feels a little bad seeing the shards. Ooh, uh, count always go up and never down. Yeah, there's. Um, we're still looking. Uh, we're still looking at a way to. Uh, <laughs> thank you, TNY. That's big. Five, uh, five gifted subs. Congrats to everyone else who got one of those. Um, no one on the team got one there. <laughs> I find that funny when someone on on staff gets one. <laughs> I wonder if there's way you can, like, opt out from those, so, like, people who are not staff get them. Oh, doesn't matter. I guess just being subbed is the way you opt out. Anyways, um, I was answering a question about uh, too many shards. There is a mechanic in the new system that will um, mean shards are, or the, the change system, shards will get used more frequently, just in general across the board you'll end up using more shards. Um, we know that there's quite often a pretty heavy imbalance in which shards you're using and which shards you're accumulating. Um, so you, you, you're sitting there and you're like, I've got one of this fantastic shard that I want and I've got 400 of this other shard that I'm never gonna use. Um, and and we, don't, we don't have something specific for that situation yet. We are well aware it's a problem. Um, 
and and like there's there's lots of simple solutions there. So things like, um, just, uh, just just basically things like, okay, you can trade ten to one for any shard, you know. Um, that might be a little too open, um, because then it becomes you can suddenly just trade, uh, like you're just picking up any item that has. Like, a, a, any T20 item suddenly becomes, like, two of any shard for you. You know what I mean? If, if you were to take, get all the shards off of it. Um, yeah. So, there, there, there's there's issues with a lot of the different options that we have for, for dealing with this problem. It's definitely not set in stone. It's definitely not, you know, like, something that we're perfectly happy with the way it is yet. But you will use more shards in general in the new system. Uh, why are the B-related idols so rare? <laughs> Is that a balance issue? Because... <laughs> nice. Uh, because they're so OP. Uh, <laughs> I liked that. You slipped that in and I almost didn't even notice as I was saying it. Um, uh, they were actually really OP at one point. Like, really OP. It was hilarious. Um, we actually just fixed a bug with them, Aha. Um, where it's the same, it was the exact same bug that was happening with, you know, every time you get the, and it's funny that these bugs are all bug related bugs, um, the ice beetles from the ice shrine, the ice beetle shrines, um, where you sometimes get one, you sometimes get two, um, the exact same bug was affecting bees, um, and something else new that we are putting in, which is how we found it, <laughs> um, and, uh, so like, yeah, we, we just fixed that. So bees, uh, I think we've we fixed the bug, um, and we've buffed the number of bees that it spawns from the tooltip now to compensate for the bug, because the bug was spawning 50% more bees than we wanted it to. Um, I cannot do that. And when it was a little bit more powerful, that 50%, random 50%, so sometimes it could be just, it, was, it could just be double for long periods of time, um, which is why you'd see these builds a little while ago that would just spike bees into the stratosphere. Um, part of it is they're just really they're kind of it's kind of a our, our, our joke you know like it's it's a little bit of a like cheeky way of, of getting something weird in the game they do work they are fun like um, but it's definitely less of a, a new player experience and more of a like um Oh, I'm doing my like third build, and I'm gonna I'm gonna do a B build now for fun. Um, that, that's kind of how I see them personally, at least. Oh, I do not have. I I could have been a lot longer to deal with that. Yeah. Tra la 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 la. And it's good to have things that are more rare than other things, you know, so you're, like, excited when you, like, you're, you're playing through, you play through a, a Prime List the whole way through, uh, you're into endgame, and suddenly you spot this B idol, and you're like, what is this? I didn't even know it existed. Um, I think that's pretty cool. Uh, so basically, all that we want, <laughs> uh, all that we want more than four affixes, you are solving through legendaries that is very nice to hear so basically all that we want more than four affixes sorry there's something something weird there or i'm just reading it wrong uh will, will there be possibilities to craft affixes as well on legendaries or is it strictly combination of different items crafting in order to create new one uh and how many maximum items can you combine into one legendary uh, i'm not going to answer that question sorry that would be, you're basically just asking how the legendaries work. Um, you've got assumptions in there that, uh, you know, I, I, I don't want you to rely too heavily on those assumptions either. But, yeah, sorry. All will be revealed when legendaries are, are fully revealed. Uh, now that the patch has been out for a short bit, is there anything that sticks out that the team is taking a closer look at balance-wise? Um, honestly, I haven't been 
paying too, too much attention to the uh, balance fixes for next patch. Um, there's some things that I know are underperforming where we wanted them to big time, and we're, we're looking at those. Um, I don't think anything's really unbelievably overperforming what we wanted it to. But I could be very wrong. Reimer would be way, 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 way better to uh, answer that question. And he did right afterwards. Yeah, lots of enemies from Chapter 9. Yeah, there's that. Sorry. Forgot about that. <laughs> Subs to the fifth Ellen reference. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> I know it wasn't a very deep cut reference, but... <laughs> there's, there's a lot of things I say that are just like accidental references to things that just sort of slip out of my mouth and then I realize halfway through saying it, I'm like... Oh, there's one dude out there that's going to be like, ah! And everyone else is just going to think I'm weird. Which I'm totally okay with. Alright, how do you guys determine every mob spawn? For example, four gorgons next to each other spawning uh, tornadoes on your screen destroying visual clarity or diamond matrons double aura twinning beams from sky blinding you. Because this patch has shown uh, enemy spawns are a problem visual-wise. Yeah, there's um, there's certain enemies... So a lot of the spawns are done semi-procedurally. Um, where, like, it's done procedurally and then we... Procedurally is just another term for random. Um, so it's done procedurally and then we sort of go back and, and, and clean it up a little bit. To, to be like, okay, well this is going to cause a problem and that's going to cause a problem. Um... And then because of the randomization that's happening in the, like, the procedural generation of the map for um, the dungeons, we, we are having to improve those, those um, spawner placements systems as well to match. Um, there are certain enemies, for example, in monoliths and arenas that are just, they, they can't both exist simultaneously. So, like, um, either they're just really strong combo together or, like, they're vis super visually noisy. Um, we do add those combination restrictions in manually one at a time, so there might be something, there almost for sure is something that is just not, um, that just hasn't, like, those, those things should probably just get manual exclusions beside them so that they don't have that happen. I think Reimer actually would be able to answer, I think Reimer does some of the, the monster spawner placement stuff. Could be wrong. I've worked very away from that stuff. Oh, I, I've touched on it a little bit, but not really. Kaka! Well, there's the second crow. Oh, that wasn't the second crow. Never mind. That was the second one. Oh, we can make a two crows build. I mean, that was a huge hit. What what combo together to make that happen? Because that was fantastic. <laughs> when is Squirrel Item coming? Uh, I feel like I can hear a raw of the chatter from the on the horizon. I, mean, I do have the buff that's like, is it lunge that where it's like your next void cleave and racing striker better? I forgot what the other buff was. Is it slow targets might just be the slow buff. Just going through these. I feel like there's. I'm. I'm. I'm not quite I'm doing something just a tiny bit wrong here with this. With how I'm playing this, I can feel it. Certain circumstances using the wrong wrong abilities. Rhymer, save me. What am I doing wrong? Am I being dumb dumb? Pike. 
Nah, we don't want to pike. I do love the this the Nodachi. Odachi. So many different ones that are like so similarly named. Did a whole bunch of research for the, the swords patch. Really cool. Really cool. Everything. I'm doing everything wrong. I'm assuming that's referring to. So I would not be surprised. <laughs> We have been we've been playing a little D2R and um, got farming Ubers. Little side note, tangent story. Um, me and my buddy got farming Ubers uh, last weekend, and uh, our first torch that we ID'd uh, 1917 Sorcerer's Torch, and our second torch that we ID'd 1916 Paladin Torch. Yeah. <laughs> Third one was a 2017 Assassin Torch, which was fine. But yeah. We're, we're still debating if we want to sell it or use it, the Valley Torch. <laughs> It is real nice. I sell the fun rabies werewolf, to be honest. <laughs> no, we're doing, we're gonna do, uh, our, our, our weird builds we're doing is we're gonna have a wolf barb and a bear sork, and we're gonna roll with those together. Weird off the wall builds. That's that's home. Feels like home. So I really wanted to do like a void themed paladin build or like a holy damage themed void knight. Um, in this, just to, like just to try and make it work. I've tried it a few times and it never really works. And it makes sense that it doesn't. I'm sure someone's gonna have a link to a build that works perfectly for that. I just didn't know about it. Come on, someone prove me wrong. Come on, someone prove me wrong. Ooh, that's nice. Intern threshold. Hydra Sork Tornado Druid won't lie, is a fun duo I recommend. Yep. Hydra Sork is just. I don't know. Hydra's. Nah. I'm really enjoying Void Cleave here. This is the first time I've um, like played a consistent build with it for more than like an hour. It's really just barely over an hour. But like I leveled it last time, so it wasn't really in the model for very long. Bye bye. Come back. That was a big hit. Boy Cleave with Forge Guard Minion Crit build is not Yeah, that was, it's actually uh, um, basically another one we were thinking of doing. I need those two handers. Titan Femur! I, I just, I love this, uh, the, the art there. Oops. I love it. Just, just a big bone. Feels good. Yeah, there's new new items coming next patch that are gonna be sweet. Excited about that. 
This one. That one's really good. Should I, how are my resistances? Can I just like switch out some of these things? Like, cool. Cool. Oh, no, I need to remove one of these to get a square one in, don't I? is really nice actually hmm Is there any re I mean, there's a ton of vitality and health there. But, like, I gotta just use these, right? Like, I've gotta do it. This seem amazing. What, what am I forgetting about here? Uh, when are you going to make your Ruby Cleaver Fire Tornado Shaman? <laughs> uh, we <be> bad. <laughs> and remember, if you're gonna ask me a question, don't forget to at me, uh, or else I won't see it. But I did see this question: Is there any plan on revisiting less useful, unique, less used uniques? Yeah. Yeah. Don't worry. Don't worry. These boots, for example, will be probably really freaking awesome next patch. <laughs> Is the attack speed restriction on Tempest Strike staying in 8-4? Yes. It is. It is. Well, as of right now, it is. <laughs> you never know; it could change. Let's. I, I want to try and craft some stuff here. Let's flip our camera. Let's let's try and do a little crafting. Let's try and bump up some of the gear that we've got here. Like I've just lost a whole bunch of fire resistance. No problem. Craft some of this into the ground. Into the ground. Into the ground. <laughs> oh, so good at this, guys. So good at this. Ah, there we go. Oh, look at that. Take it. Crit multi. 9%? Uh, it's not worth it. Let's get a major fracture on it. See this this right here, this effect that's happening right now is like what I what we want to change in the new crafting system. Alright, alright, I'm not gonna bother with that. Did I break this one already? No, I didn't. 
Level of multi-strike. Let's go. Let's crank this up. We're just going all the way to the moon. Almost got there. <laughs> Almost got there. <laughs> oh, not even close. 4%. 29. <laughs> Damaging fracture. Oh, no. <laughs> just, like, ruining my weapon. Okay. Well, uh, we successfully made ourselves weaker. No need to thank me. This probably isn't actually any better. Uh, it's not going to be useful. These are all spears except for that one bad boy. Let's, let's find an Odachi. Odachi. No, you know that one's bad. Minion, minion, poo poo. Just, just straight basic. Yeah, nice and pleasant, though. Mine can be added. Uh, melee damage. That's increased, isn't it? I don't want that. It should be a, a not a string search, but a keyword search, shouldn't it? It gets thrown on the ground, it's not even getting sold. <laughs> that would just happen right there. That's what we're fixing with crafting. That is that is like <laughs> just right there. Uh, Andrew, some of the items, it's possible that some of the items may have started, I, I don't know how he made it, but that they may not be absolutely 100% legit. They probably are, actually. But, like, there may have been something sitting in a stash that was, like, really old. Yeah. Before some sort of change happened. So I guess that's still legit. The stash is just so old. This is, this is more about me sitting here answering questions. I'm just playing for fun while I do it. The playing's for me. The questions are for you. <laughs> it's the playing so you can uh, watch how terrible I am at certain things. Alright. I see some questions. Uh, how are legendaries going to be different than uniques? Um, they're definitely going to be more awesomer. And more rarer. And a different color. Uh, and you'll have more control over what they are. Like, with uniques, you have no control over what stats they have at all. You'll have more control than that on legendaries, so... More than zero. Because <laughs> uh, you change attack speed restriction from penetration to proc chance, making the one-hit style work, but still allow for secondary procs to stay relevant. That's the whole reason why the attack speed restriction is there, is so that the proc, like like, so that the procs don't happen too frequently. Basically, yeah. Being able to just like double void cleave is kind of bonkers. Oops. <laughs> That's the, the perfect anomaly. I want to like do like a double void cleave and have them both echo, so it's like ba doom ba doom ba doom. That'd be sweet. Uh, God, not the pink. I 
I missed. Huh? Can we get a legendary color reveal leak? No. Uh, cause it might change. It's not set in stone. I, I have to, I have to like, only tell you guys things that are, like, actually gonna happen the way they are. Cause if I say something that's like, it's probably gonna be this way, and then it changes slightly, like, uh, I, I don't know what happens, but there's like this game of telephone that, that, that happens, and like, I see people in chat that are like, oh, they said this is gonna happen, I'm like, I know what you're referring to, and I definitely didn't say that. Uh, so I gotta be careful and, and uh, say things that we're just we're more confident in. Yeah. But like, and like we don't plan to change the colors of other things, and there's only so many spaces in the color spectrum to put an item, another item type. So. You guys can get probably not the exact hex code, but you bet you can get pretty darn close. This plus one charge on Voigtly, game changer. My goodness, this build just got like so much better. I don't know, I don't know how, but like, yeah, it's my jam. It's my jam right here. This is what I was missing. You don't deserve to be picked up. Belt. God, not the pink. Oh, I see what you're saying. You're, you're suggesting the, the color would be pink. I get it. I get it. I cannot do that. I, I can see us changing colors of secondary items. So, like, um... I cannot do that. I, I just mean we're probably not going to change the color of, like, uniques or sets or magics or rares. I cannot do that. So we, we, what do we have? We have blue, yellow, white, green, brown, or orange. Not brown, orange. Yeah, orange. Is there a max to how much corruption you can stack on echoes? Nope. Uh, well, technically yes, but you'll never get there. <laughs> Uh, what is the goal with Tempest Strike? Yeah, because um, the, the goal is to fix it. <laughs> um, and we haven't fixed it yet. Uh, that's a great question, though. What is the goal with Tempest Strike? Because how it is viewed from a player is you want to have procs, but you can't scale procs or add attack speed, which makes the whole skill feel really bad. Uh, so I'm not sure how to give feedback for it. Yeah, but sums up the problem. I don't have a good answer for you. If I had a good answer for you, it would already be in game. <laughs> uh, do you think the Canucks will have a better or worse season this year in comparison to last? I, I hope that uh, it's much better, especially they got ravaged pretty hard by COVID. Um, I mean, they didn't probably wouldn't have done fantastically without that anyways, but um, I, I think just because of hopefully better COVID management, they will... Um, They'll do better just in general right there. But they've, they've had a really good start. They have a ton of new players this season. Like, like a third of their roster that they're playing is new or something? I don't know. Ooh. Yeah, increased mana. Just crushing it. Just crushing it. I, I throw my sword on the ground, stomp on it a few times, and somehow I'm doing more damage. It's great. Pro tip, kids. <laughs> don't do that, actually. Don't, don't throw swords on the ground. It's bad for them.
Uh, uh, uh. Good, good excuse for the Canucks sucking lately, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they needed an excuse. That was a sad couple years. Like, we were so close. <laughs> game 7. Game 7 of the finals. I remember that day. It was the longest walk home from a bar of all time. Oh my god. The 2007? No, it's too, too early. 2014? I don't know when it was. Somewhere in between those two. 2010. It was 2010, wasn't it? Oh, that sucked. Apparently that wound is still open. I did not know. <laughs> well, with the Void Cleave, uh, the extra Void Cleave um, charge, we don't need a Racing Strike anymore here. At all. I should, just put some, I should probably just put Rebuke back on, to be honest. Yeah, I'll put Rebuke back on, just in case we need it. Still rooting for the Leafs there, Quiet. household I was raised in would uh, mean we can't be friends, unfortunately. The only rule was, doesn't, it doesn't matter who you root for, uh, as long as it's not the Leafs. Big Colorado fan back when uh, Sakic and Wah were playing there. It's less about Colorado, more just about Sakic and Wah. <laughs> and I've gone the wrong way again. Guys, why don't you tell me I'm going the wrong way? Jeez, ugh, come on. <laughs> the Jets, oh, the Jets. So sad. Any chance of the issue where companions spawn at the start of the map? Yeah, instead of at your portal when returning to a zone being fixed? Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's been fixed yet, but it's it's definitely on the list if it hasn't been. Because that one sucks. What's EHG's vision regarding build uh, variability? Uh, will we ever see minion sorcerer builds or full reflect builds or are we confined to certain builds with slight possible adjustments? Um, so I mean there's always gonna be like I guess our vision for what it is and um, like the builds available will fall into the, the categories of what our visions for those builds for those character classes are um, but we, 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 tr we really do try and give people the tools that they that they need to make oddball builds um, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of oddball builds things things that um, maybe shouldn't work but kind of do Having them be very generally, like, the most powerful is dangerous. Like, having the, having the, having the really weird builds be top tier is dangerous, I think. And, and mostly from a, um, like, a new player or comprehension perspective where, like, pe people are learning the game or people are just, they don't have um, more than a couple hours a night to play or even a couple hours a night 
uh, every other night or something like that. Like um, having builds that are uh, that makes sense generally be um, being like on a, on average. I'm making so many generalization statements here, but like make, making the builds that make sense normally a little bit more powerful. Not more powerful. I don't know how to say this properly. Having the builds that are on theme typically being safe to play, I think is a really good good thing because um, when when you're when you're when you're like all right, um, here's this character that is like a, a mage. It's all about like channeling the elements, and the best way to play a mage is straight poison. And you're like, what? Oh yeah, because there's this item interacts with this item interacts with this passive and this other skill that like has this really cool synergy and it is really cool and it's awesome, but having that be like the clear best way is overall probably detrimental to the game, I think. Um, and, and so we, we definitely like having those types of builds be possible and, and to like maybe work to, to do everything but the like... Like, I'll use Diablo 2 as an example. So, like, it's really difficult to get an Enchantress to do Ubers. It's possible. It is possible. Um, it's really difficult. You have to be very good at the game and have basically unlimited wealth. Um, <laughs> but it is possible. Um, but they're no Smiter. They're no Kicks in. Like, they're no, they're no Frenzy Barb. It's, it's just, you know, those builds that make more sense that are more standard builds, they, they're they just better, right? Um, and and I, I, I think that's actually a positive thing. So we are we are really big on build variety, which I think is the word you're trying to type there, but I'm not sure. Um, it's just, uh, like, how do you, how, where, where do you draw the line on a viable build? I mean, you were trying to say viability, yeah. Um, so like, yeah, where do you draw the line on a viable build? Is it something that can do all of the normal monoliths? Is it something that can do all of the empowered monoliths? Is it something that can do Corruption 200 Shade of Orbis? Because those are all different measuring sticks. Different benchmarks. Um, and I, I don't know if one of them is necessarily a better benchmark to use or not. But, um... The definition of viability is going to be a nebulous term for a long time. And then it's also not just, um, like, is it possible? It's like, the, 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 go back to the level 2 example, like, you can have a level 30 smiter, level 30 paladin, do ubers, and a level 99 um, perfectly geared Enchantress just barely do it. Like they they have a similar success rate probably. And like like so are they both viable? <laughs> yes. <laughs> are they extremely different? Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Tab is full. Ooh, we could increase our corruption here. I kind of just want to want to get to the, the the quest a little bit more. I think. Let's go get a key. Oh, let's get money. A little more stash tabs. <laughs> Do I prefer tankier builds or more risky range builds? Uh, which one feels more rewarding? Ah, it's a great question. I really enjoy extreme builds. So like. Uh, extremely glass cannon builds uh, or extremely tanky builds like I really like like pushing it to the extremes um, I would say I would say glass cannons are my favorite ones for the most part I really like that feeling of being on the edge um, but I also and, and I guess this is the distinction of I used to like tankier builds more and so I used to play hardcore <laughs> um, but I don't play hardcore anymore so uh Bridge Creeks, that's cool. I didn't notice that before. Um, so yeah, it's 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 much more viable uh -huh, to play. Um, I cannot do that. Uh, glass cannon builds when you're on softcore. D 
game. Let's get that move speed and void damage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so you are a marksman main. <laughs> well, like, <laughs> so, so I've, like, back to Diablo 2 again, I've been playing, I have my, my Sork and my Spider. One of them is extremely squishy, one of them is extremely tanky. And it's not what you think. The answers will surprise and shock you. I can't do BuzzFeed titles, apparently. <laughs> I love the art on this. I remember seeing that for the first time and just being blown away. I'm really excited for the um, the the ailment tracking at the top of the screen next patch. Oh. Guys, like going from from the test builds to to this, like not having that, it's such a big difference. Like it's it's so surprisingly important. Like I I you know it's important, and like we wanted to do it forever. This is not a like we decided just finally to do it because got off our butts. It was it was a technical problem that made us not be able to do it. Um, but like. <laughs> It, it had a bigger effect than I even I thought. Like, I was... No one was standing in the way of it. Uh, design, from a design space. But, uh... And I was definitely pushing to try and make it happen. Um, but, it, it, like, I think everyone was surprised at how impactful it was. What does the element tracking mean? Um, so, like, when you apply... So that the, like, the, the... Health at the top of the screen... When you apply bleed, it shows a little bleed icon. And when you apply poison, it shows a little poison icon. When you apply slow, it shows a little slow icon. Pretty basic. But just being able to see... Because it does a few things. So, like, say you have a an, an effect that gives you a bunch of slow chance or something like that. But you don't have it normally. And you're not 100% sure. Like, you can't see... There, there's a there's a ailment VFX that goes onto the enemy that is slow, but it's so hard to see, especially on some either really huge or really small enemies. Um, so then you, you're you not sure, like, is it working or not, yada yada yada, and, and suddenly just, is that a really good ring? Um, so suddenly just having that little bit of extra clarity is really useful for um, build testing. And then also there's a lot of effects that are like, um, it does more damage to bleeding targets, or more damage to, or like uh, more damage, like ten percent more damage per stack of, uh, of of slow or something. That's a, be a terrible stat, really. <laughs> but um, you know what I mean. Like there's there's a lot of stuff where having that information will really help you um, actually eke out more deeps because you'll you'll have more information to do what you want to do. Any plans to make? Items in inventory more detailistic, bigger, uh, like when you put them up in the crafting window. It's very hard to appreciate it on a laptop with even 17.6 inch, let alone a 15. Yeah. Um, I, I, like, the, the art on some of these items are, you're right, really hard to see in these, in these little windows in some cases. And, like, they're so detailed, especially some of the uniques. Like, ah. Uh, just get blown away. The, I mean, the big one that always comes to mind is those gloves, the ravenous void gloves. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're gorgeous. And I think having a way to um, to view those in a little bit higher quality would be would be really good. Um, in order to uh, keep memory usage a little more under control, there 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 are a few little. Um, space saving things that have been done because we know that they're going to be small um ooh, ooh. not that bad actually so we may have to end up putting in higher res versions of them to really get the full appreciation 
or just have like art files available or something or like a gallery on the website I don't know does it have a stat counter it does with a with a restriction it's not um, uh, it won't show you a hundred percent of the stacks in every situation but it will be very accurate for what you need to know for for most people <laughs> I <laughs> I, I know there's it's it's a technical restriction and I'm sorry guys there's I know people are gonna be a little disappointed about it but um, it was either this or not having it at all so take your pick <laughs> I still don't understand what I mean by ailment tracking can you hop on the dev client and show us uh, I mean, I can get a screenshot. Are there any, any new normal weapons coming out soon? Yep, next patch is getting uh, one of the classes of weapons is getting a whole new set of models, 2D art, stats, all those things. Uh, technically, there will be one more base than exists now as well for that class. Or for that class, for that weapon base type. Should not have gone into this. Oh no. Did I put that the, uh, I totally put that the goal ends in 2011, didn't I? <laughs> oh no, it's, oh, it's saying 2011, right. Never mind. It's just a little icon at the top, underneath the, the bar. It, it looks exactly the same as when you get a thing applied to you at the butt down here, except it's up there. It's exactly the same. Uh, screenshot new spring and skills with the helmet tracker so he can really understand. That'd be pretty cool, wouldn't it? Uh, is multiplayer at the back of your mind whenever you make skills and trees, like how uh, cooper cooperative it could be at multiplayer? It, 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 it um, yes. There is some element of, like, how is this going to play in multiplayer? Um, quite often what we do is we try and make it, like... Because we know a lot of people, even when they're playing multiplayer, they're playing on their own, right? Um, so we want to make sure it's fun and feels good and works in single player. And then um, we'll, we'll take a look and we'll either, like, maybe add a node that we're like, this is a multiplayer node. Um, like, it's terrible in single player, but, like, it's just one extra node in the tree. It doesn't actually take anything away from single player to have it for multiplayer. Um, or, or we'll, like, you know, tweak something if it's, like, well, this is just gonna be broke and overpowered in multiplayer. We just can't put that in. That's pretty rare that that happens, but it does sometimes. Um, yeah. It doesn't have that big of an impact, really. It's rare that there's any actual... Like usually what we'll do is we'll just we'll do a check. We'll be like, anything break here for multiplayer? Nope, good, moving on. Um, and then sometimes certain skills do need to be adjusted for multiplayer. Uh, lunge is a good example. The, that, one, that one did... Movement skills in general do get more attention for multiplayer than um, others. And really that's... Um, it, it's mostly stuff that we would do anyways for single player, but it's just super obvious in multiplayer because you can see the classes side by side. And you can be like, okay, well, Sentinels are three times faster than Sorcerers, so uh, we should do something about this. You know? Okay. Come on, get there. I cannot do that. And we're there. All right, that's the end of the stream. For me, we're at we're at two hours. You all have been wonderful. 
Let's see if there's a quick question here I can answer at the end just to round things out. Uh, is the idea to keep adding more weapons every new patch? No. Um, I'm sure there will be patches eventually where we don't. We, we've been going through, we want to uh, make it so that every single base type in the game is something that we've created from scratch. So something where there's, there's no, we've not bought, we've not borrowed, we've not purchased a model from anywhere. Um, everything is just like, we built the whole line of them with each other's in mind. It's like, it's built from scratch, all of us. And so we are, um, we're getting through all of our items first to make sure they're like that. And then we'll add more in here and there, uh, just to expand the, the, what's available. But the, right now, the reason you're seeing so many is because it's a really big push to make sure everything is a hundred percent original and super high quality. <laughs> all right fantastic uh thank you for uh great stream everyone i had a ton of fun i hope you did too we will see you next week